<clears throat> Hello, this is Perry Peacock with Wilderness Innovation, and today uh, we're going to do something uh, starting into some training series that uh, are going to evolve over time. And today's subject, we're going to talk about fire. We're not going to do the typical uh, fire thing that you see. We're going to be a little more detailed, have some illustrations, and try to show you some of the scale of what's involved in fire. And we're going to talk a little bit about the, the science of fire. Okay, fire. When we talk about fire, it's an exothermic reaction. And uh, once fire starts, once you get that reaction started, fire keeps going. Alright, in talking about fire, I'm sure everybody has seen the uh, triangle of fire. So let's, let's look at that real quickly here. Okay, so right now we're going to spend just a moment with the fire triangle. Not going to spend too much time with it because I'm sure everybody's seen it. But basically what we're saying is, if you don't have a complete triangle, you don't have fire. If we don't run out of fuel, the fire goes out. If we starve the fire for oxygen, the fire goes out. Or if we uh, drop the heat enough that there's not enough heat to sustain it, then the fire goes out. Now all those ingredients must be present in order for a fire to start. A fire is a chemical reaction. I can take my double barreled shotgun lighter and I can put it on this log here, this piece of wood, not really a log, but just a little piece of maple that's about, uh, it's been sitting in my firebox for about a year or so. All right, building a, building a fire uh, happens in stages. We start, it, we start at a certain point and we work up towards it. Starting a fire takes a little bit of planning and organization. And, uh, and that's how, at least that's how a successful fire works. Okay, so now to analyze why we are, weren't able to get fire with this but just scorch the wood um, let's look at a few factors here this lighter the butane in the lighter uh, burns at about uh, 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit um, we know that cellulose uh, what wood is pretty much composed of uh, will burn uh, on average around 450 degrees Fahrenheit so if we've got 3,000 degrees and it only takes 450 to ignite the wood, then why didn't the wood start? But this is uh, the composition of the average piece of wood shows what it's made up of. This blue uh, section down here is carbon. Uh, this uh, greenish band right here is showing, this is the layer showing how much oxygen is in an equivalent amount of wood. And then up here is uh, this band here, this kind of orangish band, is how much water is in wood. And then this very top layer here is hydrogen. That's my, how much hydrogen is in the wood. Okay, this little bundle of wood weighs uh, darn near exactly uh, 10 pounds. And that's what we're going to use for our illustrations in this video today is 10 pounds of wood. And we're going to show you what it takes to burn this wood and what's involved. So in this 10 pounds of wood right here, there are two pounds of water, this quart bottle right here. Two pounds of water in this wood, this seasoned dry wood, still has that much water in it. Um, 10 pounds of wood also has four pounds of carbon. So that's our carbon back here. Um, we've got three and a half pounds of oxygen in there. Um, and we've also got, so we've got our two pounds of water and we've got about a half a pound of hydrogen. So that's what's in this 10 pounds of firewood right here. That's what it's made up of, what it consists of. Okay, so I'm going to take uh, just an ordinary uh, paper drinking cup. And, uh, you know, if you throw that thing in the fire by itself, that thing will burn pretty, pretty quick. But... Let's say that I 
pour some water in that thing. Yeah, it's hot. Okay, there's our cup sitting there in the fire. And it's burned off above the water line. But down below the water line, look, it's not even, it's not even discolored. But look at that rolling boil in there. That, that water is just hotter than blazes. But you know, how hot can water get? Uh, depends on the pressure, of course, but 212, your boiling point. Maybe, uh, maybe depending on conditions, you might get it a little hotter than that, but not much. But how hot do we have, ouch, how hot do we have to get that, that paper right there to burn? That paper's got to be around 400 degrees to burn. And uh, we can't get that as long as the water's in there. You know, there's no way that you're going to start a fire with a piece of wood that has too much moisture in it. And uh, so that's the first thing is we want to make... Get fine dry wood. We want to get fine, very fine tinder, uh, so that we can apply a little bit of heat and get enough heat in there where we can evaporate off the moisture that's in the little tiny fine pieces. You know, if it's really fine like that, we can evaporate that moisture out very quickly and uh, we can get a fire to start. And we can gradually go to step two, add more uh, bigger pieces of wood and, and just build it from there. All right, now we were not able to burn this piece of wood with a 3,000 degree butane flame. Uh, and, there, and the reason why, as we just showed you, um, the moisture in the wood has to be burned off. And one thing to think about is um, even though you're scorching the outside here, inside of that, those cells have, still have water in them. And that moisture on the inside uh, if it can't escape very well, then then it's going to absorb a lot of the heat you're putting onto here and prevent this from burning. So the way that we can deal with that is take like I've shown right here, and just taking some take some let's just some fine shavings and uh, something like that right there will light pretty readily. And now, because there's oxygen all, all in and around all those shavings, and the shavings are very fine, um, we're able to apply the heat to a very small area, a lot of heat to a small area, which causes it to vaporize the water very quickly. And once that's done, then the cellulose, the wood fibers, can burn, and we can get a fire started. So let's just illustrate that right here. Notice how fast that thing flames. All, I, all it took was about a half a second of flame. This thing is going. And so you see once that process is started now we could feed this fire and this fire will keep going. We've started a chemical reaction. Okay, now what I want to do is I'm taking this 10 pounds of wood. So this, uh, this structure right here represents over a thousand cubic feet of air that it takes to burn this 10 pounds of firewood. So I'm right here in the very back corner and you can see and we're 10 feet high. That's what it takes to get enough air to supply the oxygen needed to burn just that little 10 pound bundle of firewood. This is Perry Peacock with Wilderness Innovation talking to you about fire. It's exciting. Have a great day.